Welcome back to the channel. Farmer Clay here. Been a while since I made a video, but we're gonna get back into it and pick up where I left off, and that's painting the uh, fuel tank here. I'm gonna pull the caps off, and I'm gonna pull that sending unit out, I think, or I might just leave it in there and cover up the wires pretty good. Just get a nice good coat of paint on it. Everything's sealed in, so I'm gonna get it Everything pulled out of it and get her wiped down, cleaned up, try to see if I can't get that last little bit of paint off there and hit it with some primer and see if we can't make this thing uh, sparkle nice and pretty orange. And then while that's drying, I'm gonna come on over and do a little bit of work down under this undercarriage and get that spring mounted up down in there. Get these bolts free and get that spring that's on the floor there. Get it put in and see if I can't get some of that kind of polished up and Get the benches on it cleaned off. It's the curse of the crawler. You know, I got the tracks to work around and put everything on. So, so once the fuel tank's done, then I'll put it in there, drop a battery in, and just run some temporary cables and see if I can't start it to roll it out. My goal is to put, get it out the door under its own power, get it moved over in front of this bay door, and then I'll back it on in here and into this area and see if I can't get it put a park it right in here in front of the toolbox and move some stuff around. It gets my big bay open for winter stuff for the big tractors and get some oil changes done on that. And I can keep working and praying and getting everything done on this crawler that needs to be done. So I might drive it in nose first and leave the back towards the back of the door. I think that's how I'm gonna do it. So that way the engine's forward instead of backing it in, I'm gonna drive it in. And then that way I think I'll have a little bit more room and work around the engine and anything else like that. So there's not a whole lot left to do at the back. So, yeah, I'm going to get after it. Eight. 
minutes and 46 seconds. When it bites on, not the big pieces. Is that the last painting you have to do? Well. Do you have anything else you have to do on the crawler? No, at this moment, so I okay. think we're gonna clean up all the stuff and probably go inside and see what mom's doing. Okay. Mmm. Don't me don't me pause it. Let me see it. Now we got the Seamus out here helping. So the paint gun was acting all weird and I'm not a painter by any means whatsoever. So I think it turned out pretty good. Got on top, looks good. I don't see any runs in the tank, but it'll get another coat. And I'm just using some Van Sickle, I think, from the local tractor store, so. Yeah, these parts are a real pain when my gun only wants to spray in a downward angle. Oh, I got a run in that one there, but you know, if anybody sees that one, they're going to be underneath my crawler and I might not like them anyways. So there might be a reason why they're under the crawler. But so I got these things painted on up. Figured well, I had something mixed, might as well get them all done. They were all sandblast ready to go. This is the heat shield cover for on top of the exhaust manifold that protects the fuel tank. These are the two trays for underneath your feet. Um, kind of belly pan trays, but alongside the transmission. These are the foot brackets, and then this is your clutch rod that goes to control and to engage your clutch. So, but, well, I'll get this stuff cleaned up and we'll uh, end it there for now. And no much progress there, but we do have these primed. You saw that in the last video. I redid some of my wire hangers here today, getting prepped to kind of help 
hold still. That'll be black. It won't. That'll be a heat shield black on it. That'll. Everything else will be orange. I forgot to prime this one the other day when I was priming, and this is the most important one of all of these, besides the fuel tank itself, because this holds a fuel tank, and without that, I mean, I could put it on without paint, but I figured if I got it mixed up, so I got that primed real quick. Um, it's ready for paint as well as everything else, so I got my paint stir going over here. Get it all blended on up in here, and I'll work it around here in a minute when I get my hands free. But getting that all worked up so it should, should have any clumps or any of that stuff in there. I do run it through the filters and that, but got my paint gun set up. So I'm going to read up on my destructions on what my mixture ratio goes and a little enamel hardener to go into it. And then... Once I kind of get it all set, I'll hit it. I just buy a single can of clear coat and I'll clear coat it up. And I have found that with these paints that if you clear coat it, it helps it and it doesn't fade out. If you don't, if you don't clear coat it, it fades out in a couple years. It's just the uh, tractor paints. It's something that I've kind of started to do. I didn't do it in the old days, but I've been doing it now. So I just kind of, I'm kind of following suit. If I'm wrong, I guess somebody will correct me if I'm, but it's worked for me so far. Let me get back at it and get that paint ready to go and get my mixture set and I will uh, touch back with you after everything's kind of painted up. All right, well, I got some orange spit out. It's hard to tell on this lighting, but I think I got fair enough coverage. I got a little left, so I'm probably going to let it set for probably an hour maybe flash or just for a little bit and then come back out and see where I'm at if I need to add any more I don't want to get I've known myself to get carried away and keep working it until I have runs on everything so I'm controlling myself to see if I can't get it done the bottom looks pretty good too my test pot so these all turned out I think pretty good all the edges and everything on it. Didn't do that one. That one's supposed to be black yet. So these might get a second shot on everything too. I think they turned out pretty good. I'm getting a little reflection in it already, but just kind of have to play games with them all and see what I got. Might be a run right here. I guess if I never pointed it out, you would never know. So it's coming along. It's been a long time coming, but yeah, I think these all, this one definitely needs a second coat on it. But maybe I'll use the paint on those for a second coat here in a little bit. But I'm gonna turn the heater back on and keep going from there. So I got two coats of orange on. It's looking pretty good. I touched up this guy here and he's looking pretty good. All of them are. Worked out pretty good. So then I grabbed my clear coat. Everything is touch, you know, good to draw a touch and all that. And I apply clear coat and it's starting to wrinkle my paint as you can see. And then I looked at the can, it says it has to cure for seven days before you apply a clear coat. Well, I guess I didn't read that. So my impatient, me being impatient got the better of me. So we'll see how it turns out, what happens when it dries. I might just hit it with some sanding and then hit it with another coat of enamel, orange enamel again, and see how that does. I mean, most of this is hidden. I just wanted to protect the tank so it doesn't rust up. I think I got most of that done in itself. Do I want showroom quality? Absolutely. I don't know any farmer out there in the world that wouldn't want showroom quality on it, but I think, uh, I'll just have to settle for whatever I can get done on it, whatever I can salvage, because I'm not really interested in sanding this whole thing down and taking it off. So that side isn't too bad. So I don't know, just some random areas on it. So we'll see what it does. Who knows, it might flatten itself back out. Haha, <laughs> fingers crossed, right? Fingers crossed. So, but in the meantime, I'm going to grab the battery that I just picked up and I'm gonna see if I can't make a little bit of smoke on this thing. So stay tuned. All right, so 
It's dry to touch here. I got a kind of a dragon scale on it right now, so I don't know. I might just let it run for now, just for the time being. I mean, it's most of it's covered up. Its primary focus is to prevent moisture from getting on it. So I don't know when I go to do it again, I can always just down in this region here. So, but we'll let her run, I think for now. I'll give her a couple more days of hanging in the heat and we'll uh, kind of go from there. Well, the next issue I came across is I got the uh, Magneto. I was trying to get it starting and I just had really weak spark. And I think my culprit is, is if you can see down in there, is I got some a lot of rust on all of that down there, but I got all new parts ordered and coming in, but I'm gonna take this apart and get it cleaned up. I got a screw in the top up here, right there. I got a drill, I broke off two screwdriver tips trying to get it out. So it's WD-40 and heat, so I might end up just drilling it on out. That's what's holding that unit in. There's lots of good instructional videos on how to rebuild these things. A lot of people out there that know more than I do, it's an FMJ type for uh, Fairbanks Morse. My donor doesn't have the correct one on there, but, or have the same one on there. So I'm just kind of going through and polishing up a little bit of this and uh, get everything ready. This, everything looks really good on all this side. Oh, just dumped all the bolts. I got new gaskets coming. Um, everything looks good on this side, the key and all that stuff. There's the timing mark that C. So really quite a, a simple unit. So you put the C in the down position like that. So, so I'll finish taking this apart and I'll get that the armature, I think is what it's called, out of there. And I'll uh, go put in my lathe and just kind of see if I can't knock the rust off some steel wool or something and then get a brush on the inside of this to just kind of knock the rust off of it and clean it up a little bit. So I'll see if that'll work. This bushing looks pretty good shape. Sorry, I'll focus on the camera. So, didn't seem to have too much planing of that. The points looked in, in good shape on there. I don't see anything terrible on that, but I just think that I wasn't getting enough juice produced off this, but since I have it all apart, the parts should be here in a week, so. I'll get everything cleaned and prepped and ready to go. It gives me time to monkey around getting that screw out and Get the rest of it ready to go and cleaned up so that way when the parts show I can slap it together, get my adjustments set in and move forward from there. See if I can't maybe get this thing to go. So I just put a temporary starting solenoid up on here and hooked it to the battery. Got a battery grounded back there. It looks terrible up on here. That's uh, my jump pack. I just put a trickle charger on that. So that way it keeps it going, but yeah, I'm just trying to see if I can't get a little bit of spark, but I wasn't getting much. Spark plugs don't look terrible, but I got to read up on some of the gapping on that. So, and we'll kind of get everything cleaned up. I got a bunch of dirt down at the bottom of that, grease and stuff from years and years. So I'll get that cleaned up and a couple bolts to tighten up across there too. So I'll keep plugging at it. All right, so I got that pressed out. Everything went good on it. You can see the rust on this. You can't conduct electricity through rust. It just maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I've always made sure that I didn't have rust on that stuff when working on small engines and stuff. But I mean, you can see it's pretty well covered in there. The bearing's okay. I might just repack it. I think I'm just gonna repack it with grease. Sorry. I'll repack it with grease. Call that good. Yeah. yeah, the side's just as bad there too, so if you can't conduct, then you can't get spark, so we'll get, uh, get that cleaned up. Alright, so I got in there, got that rust knocked out. I got a little bit down on that bottom edge yet that I'll, I think will be okay once I get it scrubbed down. Here's the, uh, Shaft still a little bit there. I didn't want to get too frisky and try to knock too much off, but I think it looks pretty good. I'll get everything wiped down really good and cleaned up before it goes in. But 
better than it was. I'll get that grease off that bearing and all that down there. Still got to get that guy out. Once that's out, then I'll go and I'll get everything cleaned up really well. And then uh, I got to go and drill this up next. So got to build me something to get down in there, get it in with a die grinder and clean that up so my drill bit goes in straight. So that's what I'm going on next. Uh, I reached in with this guy. One of my friends gave me a bunch of tools that his dad had when he passed away. And it's just a Harbor Freight guy whole pack of them and all that so i used the brass so i didn't get too aggressive in there just to flush the rust off of it and that's what it did so it should work i think it looked pretty good so all right so i've been working on this i got it drilled out you kind of see the oh sorry the difference there the rings this one's threaded right out, but yeah, this one's kind of being stubborn. That's steel on aluminum for you. So I've tried a little bit of heat on there. I'm kind of doing a little heating and cooling. Don't want to get too carried away. I did end up getting this out. Of course, I really destroyed it coming apart, but I think she was kind of living the last of her life anyway. So I got the new one coming. It'll be all right. But we'll turn around and what I noticed I got to do is, and it's hard to see, is there's rust up on top up in here on both sides. And I need to make sure I got good grounding on that too. So I'll get that done. And then I'm going to replace this wire um, with a new one in there because if that one grounds even the slightest, it's going to kill my spark. So I'll see if I can't get something put in there, a heavy wire, and then shield it with uh, some shrink wrap or something, put it in place, and then shrink wrap it so it kind of form fits it. But I'm going to keep seeing what I can do to get that out. Got it drilled pretty center, but I'm a little off to this side over here. So I'm going to keep working at it. All right. So it was a success. I got it out. The top end of these threads were a little, a little loose, but here's the culprit. This is what was left inside there that was just seized in. I drilled it out down the center, tried using some reverse easy out stuff, just wasn't happening. Um, so I ended up getting it drilled all the way out. Then I took an air tool, reached down in there, cleaned it on up a little bit to loosen it a little more. And then I end up using, out of this little small three tap set, this guy here ended up pushing it on out. It's a quarter 20 tap. So it's not the bottoming. I've been finishing it with the bottoming tap here. Is what I use to polish it up. So, and then I got a new. It's an Allen head, and I'll probably put two Allen heads on both sides. But it'll be an Allen head screw that'll go back in on them. Like I said, a little loose there on the top, but as it gets down in there, it'll saw seal up in there a little better. Yeah, we're down into original threads there. So like I said, it's loose at the top, but it, I'm probably gonna put some blue Loctite on it so that way the next person can struggle and hate life. But as it goes down, it'll bite in, so it should be good. I can't over drill it. I'm sure there's other things I could put in there, but it'll probably just get some blue Loctite on it and call it good. And that should also help to keep it from being seized in in the future too. A little something in between. If I really wanted to, I could wrap a little, wrap some thread tape for uh, plumbing pipe tape around there. Yeah, that's pretty snug, so. So, it's kind of the name of the game, I guess, when you work on old equipment. Sometimes you'll have a little slop and play in it, but. At least I got it out and salvaged somewhat of the housing, so I'll uh, get the rest cleaned up and get a different cord or something made for that. And we'll go from there. So, oh, hang on here. I'm going to shut the radio off. So I got the shaft pressed in. 
I put a socket over the top of that. I used a, a deep well 5 8 impact socket, put it on there, and then I took it to the press and press it down in. So kind of got that. I'm waiting on some of the parts for sealing that back up. I got a new snap ring I'm going to put down there because the video I was watching says, watch that snap ring. It likes to fly, and sure as heck, I don't have a clue where it landed in my shop, and there ain't no finding it now. So a uh, new snap, 916 snap ring will fit on down there um, against that to help lock that in. So this side's all clean, ready to go. Um, I'm going to get my new wire built for the inside to get that back through that comes out there. And then I'm going to uh, get the plate on. And I just want to see how it rotates, make sure nothing's catching because it has a little play without this other bushing here on this side. So get some of that stuff cleaned up and assemble a little more. I'm not going to get super in-depth on it. Like I said, there's a lot of videos on how to rebuild these FMJs um, from Fair Fairbanks Morris. So the one gal, she has it and she has all the parts listed and you can buy them from her or you can get the parts elsewhere. So, but I'm just kind of get a little bit put together till I wait on the rest. I did scrub that out pretty good, but that stuff's just caked in there and with the bearings still being in there, I didn't want to get too frisky. So, and I did repack it. That's high temp grease I put in there. It's a heavy axle grease that I use, but once I get the new washer and all that, it'll seal it on in there nice and tight. So I'll put a little more together and... Maybe I'll come on over and start putting some hardware in on this to get this set up for the fuel tank. Um, here's the old strap that went across here. That's just uh, a cotton strapping that they put across there for holding the fuel tank. So I went to Joann's, the local fabric shop we have here, and just got the same thing. That's just a cotton and then um, I got some rivets from the local tractor supply that will rivet into the two small pieces. Each get a rivet, two rivets here and here. And this will flip. I touch it. His hand's kind of oily. So it flips up. So that cotton sits right in there for the fuel tank to rest on. So I'll uh, maybe get that bolted up and some of that stuff done. Because that stuff can be done and it's not going to hurt anything. So, and we'll get it ready. Maybe I'll lay the fuel tank down on it and hook up the fuel, run the fuel lines for now to see where we're at on everything. So, just trying to get it a little closer where I can run it and get it driven out of the shop like I want. All right, so it's been a couple days. A bunch of parts showed up on it. We got the new rubber gasket, new coil, new points condenser and rotor. So I'm going to assemble this, but I got to reuse this ring first. And that goes down in first against that bearing. Down in like that. And then the rubber seal goes with the grooves up. See, there's a flat side in that. Once again, there's more thorough, better articulated videos from much smarter people online. So that goes down in there. And then this guy comes in like that. So I'm gonna take it over to the vise and I'm just gonna tap that down in. I don't know, we'll see how it goes in. I don't know if I'm gonna do the chisel marks that just kind of swelled on there or maybe just do one to help lock in. We'll see what it does, but I'm gonna go to the vise and do that real quick. All right, so I got that other one put in there tapped it on in and locked it. It's pretty firm, so I'm not gonna maul up the aluminum, I don't think so. It, it fit in pretty good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rip this thing the rest of the way together. I guess if anybody has questions, leave a comment or you know down below on any of that. And I'll uh, keep assembling and see if I can't maybe get a little spark out of it today. So I got that side finished up, got the nut put back in there. I haven't folded the washer yet on it. Um, I'll wait till the end before I install it. I got the new wire put in. It went a little heavier gauge wire, but that is a uh, shrink wrap, a heat shrink that I put on there and ran it all the way around and it shapes in pretty good. So it just has two levels of protection on it. And I put it in loose and then I just used, reached in with my lighter. Or my, actually, I used my torch and just kind of gave it a little, little heat and it gets everything lined up. So it come out pretty good. This is the original that was in there, and I just figured I'd upgrade it with a little heavier wire and 
also with a better coating on it. So all that is is just to ground it and I don't want that arcing across and grounding out and killing my engine. So it comes up and leads to that. And then this is a manual kill so you can reach up and kill the engine there or you can run a wire up to a switch to ground it out up there. So I'm gonna probably do a solenoid type style where when I provide power to a solenoid from the key ignition, it will flip the switch in the solenoid, actuate the solenoid, and it will shut off the ground. But once that solenoid loses power from the key ignition, so when you shut the key off, it will allow the ground to go through the solenoid and onto to kill the engine. So that way I don't have to have an extra ground switch. So I got, <laughs> I got my helper out here, so... He's learning all about points and condensers. So I was going to teach him about spark gap and what happens when he listens to dad and holds the spark wire while dad spins it. So we'll see if we could catch that on film too. So here they are installed. So the tank sits right down in that saddle like that. So those are sitting pretty flush, even recessed in a little bit into that, which I was after. That's what the bottom looks like. Got a little rough on some paint there, but... I got it done. I'm gonna get some touch up on it later, somewhere down the line, maybe. All right, so I got the fuel tank up on there. Um, these bolts are tight. I don't have the straps or anything on. I might just put some ratchet straps around to hold it at this time. Like I said, this is just temporary till I can, so I can get it moved over a bay. Um, biggest thing is I wanna get it out and get it put on some boards and get the pressure washer out on a nice warm day and try to get as much of that as I can. And then when I go to track this in to the shop, it's gonna be tracking on uh, boards like I have there the whole way in so they won't be in mud. I washed it off, I had it all clean, but that's just from tracking at the 25 yards to get it here into the shop and that's what it looks like. So that's my goal is to get all that cleaned up underneath there because I got a bunch of these plates. I'm going to take a bunch of these off and retrofit for whatever blade I decide to put on. I haven't made up my mind. I'm going to put a blade on it. I might, I might not. I think it'd be really handy if I did. But like uh, the tank's on. I got a crank in. I got spark. I got the magneto back on. Um, I, it's just not spinning fast enough to get a lot of spark. But it's it's still there. I got this spark indicator, which they work. They're not the greatest, but it work. I am seeing it. So at least I know I am got, I'm getting spark out of there. So I need to, uh, finish wire getting the fuel tank plumbed in. I'm going to run. I know I should, probably shouldn't do it, but I'm going to run three eight steel line from here. Bring it on down. I got to find this. This is half inch, uh, 20 TPI on this carburetor. And this has a, um, screen inside this banjo fitting but i'm not super thrilled with how that sits on there but it is original so i think i'm going to run this towards a block bring the fuel line over bring it up and send it on in and then for this other one this fuel line comes from here we'll come over 90 go in at a downward angle and line up with that and i've actually looked at it and everything lines up pretty good with that hole so I'm assuming that's what that hole's for. Now, the problem with steel is you get vibration, and that will fatigue steel lines. I am aware of that. But I think right there I'm going to put a little piece of rubber around the steel line and clamp each side of it. And I'm probably going to maybe put a rubber line, piece of rubber hose on it and clamp it here. And maybe up here or something, or kind of put them on and maybe as a vibration dampener. I've seen that done before on big trucks where just randomly, you know, Cat or Cummins or Detroit, they would have a piece of rubber clamped onto a steel line for vibration dampening. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. I guess we'll all know together if it does. Leave in the comments what you guys think, if it's right or wrong. I know copper should probably be the way to go. You could do rubber, but I'm not a big fan of rubber. I think it kind of looks a little floppy and sloppy sometimes, but it does work good. It doesn't ever crack due to vibration, just weathers out, so. But I kind of want to do steel lines. I think that'd be a, I can get them nice and crisp and straight. I've done them before on other tractor repairs I've done. So, but she cranks good. She sounds, she sounds good while cranking. My, uh, this is uh totally approved by experts only. So. Yeah. 
and I've been watching, I had it cranking and I was watching the uh, oil pressure gauge over there and it, it goes up. So I know I got oil pressure that's happening in there. So, but, but I think that's going to be it for this video. I got a bunch of links, a bunch of them together. I'm going to stream together that have been taking place a little bit, but I finally got the fuel tank down. I got the new caps on. I got the fuel gauge put in. This is going to wrap around kind of like that. And then I'll send the wiring back over the edge down. So it should fit underneath the hood pretty good. So it's kind of a one-off fuel tank. There's, I don't think there's any other crawler like it with that fuel gauge in there since I had that done. But it'll, uh, it'll be something. I got a couple holes to fill down there for gauges. So I figured a fuel gauge might be a nice one. So, and I think I might follow the same pattern where I got three gauge holes over here. Maybe try to line up and do one or two here and one there. Just depends to kind of keep the pattern. Got to keep this hole here so I can reach my fuel sediment bowl back in there. So I can turn and change it. I'm assuming that's what that hole's for because this is all lined up that way. Um, but the other one I'm going to do, and I got to get my measurements. I'm going to get rid of the rod. And I think I'm going to go to a cable system. I'll come off of this bolt to clamp the cable. And that cable will run along here. And I'll do another cable on so it's a straight run across. And then I will bring it on up through a hole. Probably clean up that square hole or something. Set it up there where it will thread into the round hole here. And then attach up. Or I might have to change the angle or something to get it to line up better. But... I'm not a fan of that rod. It kind of is in the way of everything. But if I can somehow get a cable through it all, I think that might make it a little, little better. So that way when you actually actuate it, it shuts it on and off and works. Because right now, if you hit it one way or another, and it, the adjustment's just all weird. It's so bent and out of shape. So I feel I just want to go a different direction than just that rod. So... But, well, thank you for watching. I'm going to go in and try to wrap this up and get it posted online for you guys. Appreciate all your patience on my slow progress on this unit. You know, life comes along and I sometimes get other priorities. So, thank you for watching. Thanks for watching.